It's a special night for some special Torrance volunteers, city council members, and former elected officials, all loading up at City Hall and dropping off in Irwindale for an exclusive peek at the Torrance entry in the 135th annual Rose Parade. It's great. Every year it's another theme, another event, and I'm very excited to be here that we have the opportunity to showcase the city of Torrance with another, hopefully, award-winning float. This is the city's 68th float. The lyrical call of nature follows the story of a mother hummingbird returning to her chirping babies. I think it's just a neat connection, like because I've heard so many stories from all the volunteers of you know, they have them in their garden, they feed the hummingbirds. June O'Neill has been serving as the Torrance Float Supervisor at Fiesta Parade Floats for 22 years. It's very much a communal art project. Um, and it's cool to be a part. You might be doing something when you come to decorate that's very menial, like gluing a seed on one by one, or crushing up coconut, or cutting straw flour. But then in the end, all these little contributions from all these people comes to make a Rose Parade float. Volunteers come from all over the city, and this man has been coming from as far away as Texas on and off since the 1970s. I hear this a lot. Uh, it's on my bucket list to see the parade. I said, you ought to go out and a couple hours, maybe a couple days, and decorate and see how it really is. Nearly one million people will indeed see how it really is, lining the parade route in Pasadena, getting an early start to 2024. We were nervous about the crowd. We heard all the people, and so we get, my wife had us up at 4 o'clock this morning, maybe 3.45. No matter the time, you can still feel the positive energy everywhere you turn. Uh, everybody, a lot of times, are brand new uh, coming here, so you get to meet new people, and then they're always really happy to be here. Oh my gosh, it's so overwhelming. It's totally beyond anything we've ever experienced. We come from a really small town, and so the, the biggest parade that our kids have ever experienced is like a fraction of this. So this is really exciting. This is year 26 for parade official Alex Young, who encourages those watching on TV to check out the extravaganza in person. Nothing replicates the parade in person. From hearing the bands and feeling the percussion, to seeing them do their steps, to uh, seeing the brilliance of the colors of the floats and the floral arrangements on the floats. And here comes our favorite float, winner of the Princess Award for the most outstanding floral presentation among entries measuring 35 feet or less in length. Our city's float stands 16 feet tall, 35 feet long, and 18 feet wide. Its features are filled with hundreds of thousands of lentils and seeds, as well as tree bark, and of course, roses, 4,000 bright yellow roses, and 1,000 free spirit roses. I think just like the flowers and stuff make it like really special about making like a whole thing, like just with flowers and papers and stuff, it's really fun. Well, we saw the city of Torrance float, which is really beautiful. It was just so colorful and the, the so very like intricate looking. One of the eight riders waving to the crowd is Jody Cheng, the West High student whose float design won the contest that was open to every high school in Torrance. <laughs> This year's Rose Parade included a total of 40 floats, 21 marching bands, and 19 equestrian units, all beautiful, just like the sunny day that invited people off their couches and into the crowd. I think it's one of those things where you should at least do once in your life. Um, I mean, I, I've been a local for over 20 years, and this is the first time I've come. It's so much more beautiful in person than it, you can even see it on TV. The floats are, the detail, the all the work that goes into it, it I mean, it's just another level to see it up close. 
Happy New Year to all. I'm Kim Edwards with Torrance City Cable.